Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tony and I'm building the Hetzer or the Jag Panther 38, the full metal kit from Armatech 1 to 6 scale. And in the last session, uh, we assembled all the tracks, I painted the tracks and I installed the tracks onto the tank. So what's really key now is to get some power to the drive motors to test the tracks and a running mechanism to make sure that they're all running as they should with no issues because uh, ahead of, I need to do that ahead of going any further on the tank. Um, so I want to do that before I finally sort of set the glasses plate, um, do all the mock welding um, and put the skirting on the sides because to get to the tracks, to remove the tracks if I need to, is going to be a nightmare if I don't, uh, if I don't do all this first. So I want to get power onto the tank. So relatively straightforward, having said that, uh, because of the restrictive space inside the hull of this particular tank, Armatec recommend um, a, a two, two batteries, which are two smaller batteries, a bit smaller than what goes in the M26 and some of the bigger tanks like the Tiger. Um, but if you're not sure if you're going to buy one of these, check with Armatec and they're very good and they'll tell you uh, exactly what batteries to go for. I mean, there are more expensive batteries available on the market, but I've got, I've opted for these sort of reasonably priced batteries. Um, and, you know, from my experience, as long as you condition them, they run perfectly and you get a good running time out of each of the tanks. Um, but the problem with that, this particular battery that Armatec uh, recommend comes with what's known as spade uh, spade or or f2 terminal fittings which are the the sort of slide on fitting which as opposed to the ring fitting i don't know if you can see that in the camera so there's a ring fitting and then there's an f2 or a spade fitting here um, and the problem with that is that although armatec do send you the main power cable has actually got the spade fittings on it so they, they're aware that these batteries come like that the bat the lead that you get to connect them up in series has actually got the ring fittings on them um, and not only that if you're going to be charging these batteries most chargers if you're going to hardwire them to your batteries have got the again they've got the ring fitting for you know to be able to screw down into the top of the terminal without that then you're going to have to adapt some of the cables so that's what i'm going to do today we're going to adapt some of these cables we're going to get everything wired up connected up in series connected into the main power module um, and then get some power onto the tank i'll obviously got my receiver and my radio set ready to go um, but ahead of that, what we need to do is just make sure you've got some simple basic tools if you're going to try and attempt this yourself. Um, it's reasonably straightforward, so the, but the key thing you're going to need, you're going to need a multimeter just to test the battery, the battery power voltage coming out of each battery to make sure that all the connections that you make are still receiving that sort of same level of power from the batteries. You're going to need a, a, a wire cutter. Uh, just a very simple basic wire uh, stripper if you like um, you know the crimping tool again, a little, I've got a little ratchet crimping tool brilliant little tool again all these tools are actually quite affordable um, you're going to need cutters um, you're going to need some wire you're going to need some various spade fittings again these are all relatively sort of uh, cheap to buy and you're going to need some heat shrink insulation so that you can just connect up everything slide the uh, heat shrink over heat it up and it seals it and makes it really good and insulates it from inadvertently crossing wires or touching and then blowing something up i'm also going to put an inline um, a fuse or breaker from the power unit just in case there is an issue um, and i'll put that on, i use that on the m26 and it works perfectly and i'll also do that for you today as well so a lot to be said there sorry um, but we'll crack on in a minute and hopefully the end result will be we can get power into the tank, get everything set up and we can see the tracks running for the very first time. So I'm going to reposition the camera now and we'll get stuck in straight away. Right, we're just about ready to go. Um, but before I do anything, I just want to test these batteries uh, to make sure I'm getting 12 volts or more, should be more. And that's reading at 12.9, which is brilliant. And that's also reading at 12.9. So these multimeters are absolutely invaluable. If you're going to use one of these, turn it to 200 volts So because you're going to be up. It's fine for 20 volts, but as soon as you go above that um, for 24 volts, you're going to need to turn it up to 200 volts. So I've already connected up. I'll just move this out of the way for a minute. I've already connected up one or two of these cables, a, power, a live and a neutral. I've put the spade fitting on the end here, and I've fitted a ring fitting on the end of this. So let's just connect that into the, onto the battery. Have to be very careful you don't touch these or allow them to touch inadvertently and that goes on to that now let's just check and i'll just pop that up on there hopefully you can still see that let's just make sure that the the voltage is the same coming out of the battery and let's send it up. just make sure that yes yeah, 12.9 then we can see that is that visible on there i think it just about is 
so I'm getting 12.9 so I know that these two leads are perfectly wired if you find that uh, when you connect it to the other end you drop a bit of voltage that means you might have damaged some of the cables inside the little wires inside so it's really important that when you're cutting these cables that you don't damage the sort of the the very fragile wires on the end of the cable when you strip it otherwise you may get a drop in voltage so i'm just going to disconnect that so i don't want these inadvertently touching and shorting things out um so that's that i'll just turn the voltage meter off for now or the multimeter now i've already stripped this i've stripped this back for probably about eight millimeters on this cable this is a, a 10 gauge or 10 uh, what they call awg which is the american wiring gauge uh, so i'm using a 10 gauge and this this lead here is going to be what i use to connect the batteries in series to get 24 volts now armatech do send you a cable however the ring connectors on the end are just too too small um, to facilitate the bolts that i'm using or these battery bolts uh, I'm using to connect everything together. So these are sort of these are what was known as sort of battery bolts or motorcycle bolts, um, and they're brilliant for connecting up ring terminals and and all the like. So I'm going to put that to one side for now. I've already fitted the what's going to be the connection for the negative side for the battery, and now I'm going to do the positive side. So what I'm going to need here is a a ring fit fitting like such, like that. I'm going to crimp this um, on the blue setting. Uh, although yellow is typically for the 10 gauge, I just found that the it doesn't crimp it down as tight as I would like it to do. Um, now, before I do anything, I'm just going to pop that in there. I'm going to ratchet it down so just so that it grips it, and that's it. It's not going anywhere. So that's that's the beauty of using these ratchet crimps. Um, so now that's in there, I can then get a heat shrink, and this time is going to be the use the right one. Uh, that is the right one yep uh, so this is designed for this gauge of wire so I'm just going to slide that over before I put the ring fitting on um, and then we're going to just before I do that I'm just going to just give that a bit of a twist and I'm going to slide that if you can see that I'm going to slide that into into the, the little terminal i'm going to crimp down using both hands to get a really good firm crimp on that and then that's a really good i can feel that's in there nice and tight and then i'm going to pop that over but i'm going to pop it slightly over the just slide it slightly over that so you don't see any of the wire there slide that over there like that then i'm going to get my heat gun which is also an invaluable tool for this I should have said and then I'm just going to heat that up and what we want to see is it shrink down but also the glue appear the adhesive appear on both ends and you know it's got a really good seal I'm just turning that around running that up and down I've seen people do this with naked flame you know lighters and the like it's a bit bonkers that but um you don't want to burn this the heat gun is perfect tool for this i just see the glue coming out now i've got it on a sort of a it's not red hot it's just nice and hot so now that's perfect so that gives us our red and our black or positive and negative for connecting the batteries in series so what we'll do is i'll just see if i can just temporarily pop this will it hold let's have a look just to see if we can test to make sure we're getting 24 volts that's there that's not wanting to play ball that i might have to wait there we go now let's see if we're getting 24 volts out of this battery so now what i'm going to do it's it's let me just do that a little bit better than that so now that's just temporarily connected just to make sure i am getting the 24 volts that i need 
24 plus volts so now I'm going to go on the positive on this side negative on this side and now I'm getting 25 let me just pop this up so you can see it I'm now getting 25 plus volts coming out so there's your there's your batteries now connected in series we know that that's good so what we're going to do now is just pop that to, um, to one side for now while we work on the other cables right so that's that now so i've got to do another one of the another set of these um in um in the positive and negative so i'll go and get the wires now and be straight back so i've got a couple of cables that i've already um pre-connected the two ring fittings to i'm going to now just make sure i've got the same length cable as i've previously made so i'm just going to use that as a gauge i mean it doesn't have to be exact so I'm going to be cutting them just around the edge of in line with the spade fitting just just shy of that just mark those like so and then cut these put this the spare away What's that Now I'm going to put that on there so I don't forget. Um, now we're going to strip this. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to, where it's sort of compressed it a bit when the cut, I'm just going to just tidy that up, straighten it up with my pliers. Now I'm not an expert in any of this by any means whatsoever. It's just this stuff I've learned over the years. And you know, it's 12 volts. Um, you're messing with so it's not um i'm talking so i forgot where i am it's 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 you know you're gonna, you're gonna get if you do it's not a disaster put it that way it's reasonably safe voltage to play with so again i'm just going to get my work now i am going to put it on the 10 gauge cutter so if you've got one of these it has all the gauges on here um and i'm just going to put that in again around about sort of eight to ten mil and i'm just going to go around that you don't want to be overzealous with this because you really don't want to damage any of the little wires, little fragile wires. I mean, you could just go straight through, but I don't like doing that. Now I'm just going to start to ease that off. There we go. And I'm just going to give that a bit of a twist, like so. And then I'm going to put a heat shrink, obviously black. Um, and then I've got my little spade fixing here, which is the yellow gauge, which you get if you get these kits, they come in different colors, typically red, blue, and yellow, yellow being the largest. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to load up my ratchet again, just in the yellow section. Don't know if you can see that. I'm just gonna hold it there, just so that I've got a grip on it, so it's not going anywhere. Um, I'm then gonna get the wire, feed it in from the rear of it, done before just twist that as I'm going you really want to see some of the wire come through this end and then when you're happy crimp down and that's it a really strong fitting or really strong connection and then you can put the insulation or your heat shrink over the top of that and what I do what I do is I just cover it ever so slightly so it's down to the end of that so that it's now covering that we get the heat shrink gun on same again and then again watching the waiting for the adhesive to bubble out so we know we've got a really good bond. And that's that one done. Now we go on and do the positive. Right, we do the same again with the, what's gonna be the positive lead. 
so we'll just same exactly the same process I could probably do a whole video just on on this I guess this is kind of going to be a lengthy one guys so apologies for that but I thought I'd film it because I've had some comments earlier on even when I was doing the uh, M26 and the Tiger from some some watchers I'm um, trying to understand how we wire these things up and I just thought because of the the different with the difference with the heads are if you, you may find this interesting if not you can always fast forward can't you um, hopefully uh, so that's stripped uh, we'll just load up the heat shrink again on that and uh, we've got our spade fitting this is what's commonly known as the female spade fitting so it goes on to the male um, I didn't come up with those terminologies by the way so don't shoot me uh, again I'm just going to grab that just in there so it's not going to go anywhere brilliant tools these um, present the there's a loose wire there you want to keep these don't twist them too much you just want to keep them tidy as you present it into the rear of the spade fitting and I tend to just twist it and then I can see the wires just popping through so that's that's perfect give it a good old crimp and it's done and then exactly the same process as before just want to get that heat shrink over it um, I mean it will shrink back a little bit so so that's that That's it. Just, you can just about see the adhesive coming through. Let that cool down a bit, and we've got our two leads ready to plug onto this battery here to give us our connections. This end here. Now, obviously, when we connect all of these up together, there will be a, a larger heat shield that will go around the entire connection to stop it from hitting I've got them in here not sure which size I'm going to need yet that's going to have to be sort of I'll probably have to wing it but you can see that the I will probably have to put a massive heat shield over the whole thing just to uh, sorry a shrink shield sorry a uh, heat shrink shield even um, just to connect it because I don't want anything touching each other inadvertently because there's a huge amount of cabling that goes into one of these tanks as you know um, so um, I'll get ready and we'll get on to the next step Right, so I've already trimmed off the existing spade fittings off the, the, the cable, the power cable that Armatech sends you. Um, and I will, uh, going to be taking advantage of this stage to put the, the breaker in. But before I do that, I'm going to fit the two ring terminal fittings to the end of these wires. So as before, just need to get myself, I'm going to do the, the live wire first to put the, the heat shrink over the top of that. Um, get my ratchet, load my ratchet into, into the, sorry, load the fitting into my ratchet, Just clamp down a little bit so it holds it nicely in place, present the power cable in so I can actually see the, push that in so I can see the wire at the other end crimp down and that's a lovely fitting so just slide the heat shrink over the top and as before just Now it's shrinking back perfectly. You'll know it's right because you can start seeing the profile of all the 
the metal terminal and everything come through it's the insulation and the glue starts bubbling this end so that's that what I'll do is I'll go on and do this one now and then uh, we'll come back and we'll do the um, how we put this inline breaker together right so that's both cables done negative and positive now I'm going to just uh, install the breaker onto this main power line here the live wire here so um, sort of like slightly nervous moment when you do this but I'm going to go ahead and commit so I'm going to cut roughly sort of halfway I want to be able to think about the position of this when I install it on the tank so I can get to it but as I said the batteries being on the back of the tank I'm really quite relaxed about where this is going to go because I think there's going to be enough flex on the leads to be able to get to this breaker when I need it so I'm just going to cut there and then we don't have to fit any terminals or anything to this tidying that up so we just need to trim this wire again roughly about the same cut as before about 10 mil or sorry 10 gauge and 10 mil back just turning that around Hopefully that will slide off. There we go. Just a bit of a twist on that. Now, this bit will go in line and we'll go back to the battery, connect to the battery. So this just unscrews here and somewhere. Yes, it is. It's here. I'm just going to wind this out only just enough to be able to get the. I don't know if you can see that, but. There's a brass inner lining here, but this grub screw goes through, and that's what your cable goes in. Like, uh, make sure that I push this over the edge of that. That's quite, it's quite narrow. That so I might, I might do something with that, but we'll see. Anyway, that goes into there, making sure that you've got it's only going into the cable. Don't want it hitting the insulation you want to get the right connection just holding it there very gently just winding that grub screw in and now tightening it up making sure give that a tug wind that in and that is that we do exactly the same on this side I didn't show you any of this when I was doing the um, the M26. I didn't think um, you tune in to, to watch this kind of thing, but um, subsequently I've had a few people ask, so I thought uh, it might be worth showing. Um, if you tuned in for tank building, um, we are we are building the tank, but these are the important electronic parts that need to be done to bring life to this amazing model. And actually it's a part that I really really enjoy um, it's just a nice way of sort of putting your own touch on it if you like this will come off so that's you don't have to put one of these on I just want to I just want to do it because I think it's just gives me a little bit of extra protection so that comes off that slides over the top of that we'll just wind the grub screw out already out actually um, and that goes in making sure you've got no loose small wires again don't want to be hitting through the insulation you just want to hit directly onto the, the copper Gonna get uh, slightly an 
another old, another Allen key just to get some real torque onto that. Apologies. That's it. Give it a tug. It's not going anywhere. Screw that on, and that's that's your inline green line breaker. Obviously, you just need to manipulate the wires. So now we're ready, if you like, to connect this to the 24 volt feed. But before we do that, we obviously have to connect up these leads here onto the batteries. Now, one thing I'll say about spade fittings that because you're if you're sliding these on and off, these do tend to work a little bit loose, but you can recrimp them if you like with your long nose pliers just by grabbing hold of it and just putting a little bit of pressure on both sides like that, just clamping them down and maybe on the side and that find that you'll find that that tightens up and it should be a bit hard to push on and it is you don't want it to be loose you need that to be a really tight fit because you don't want to inadvertently sort of pull this off you know when you're when you're cabling up the tank so um, that's that um, so now we've done this we can now start starting to put the whole thing together and very shortly we'll be getting some power to the tank and testing the tracks right we're going to get into real spaghetti junction with wiring uh, in a moment but so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up this battery uh, for its charger. Um, I've got to do basically wire, wire a positive and negative charge for the charger here, positive and negative to the charger here. I've also got to loop these two together to create the series and then these two to connect to the tank of the power supply to the tank. So um, this is going to get a little bit bitty and tricky, but we'll get started. Um, so I have the main power lead, oh sorry, the negative lead here. Um, what you've got to do is obviously there's a shape to these as a profile. I don't know if you see that. What you've got to do is just be mindful that when you line these up that uh, you want them to turn and be in line. So just be careful of the profile of this. So I'm going to turn this upside down for now. I'm not going to connect these to the battery until I've done all the other connections. So I'm going to turn this upside down like so. So it's flat side. I've then got, uh, let's move that out of the way. <laughs> I've then got the negative for this battery, which I'm going to line up now that this is you've got to imagine that this is the top of your terminal on your battery so just layer that up on that but before i do that i'm going to put a couple of heat shields on a bigger one i'm actually going to put two on two different sizes one on that side and then the smaller one on this side so that's on like that um, pop that on there so this is the this is the just checking yeah this is the negative from the battery charger to the main, let's call this the battery here. And then we've got the negative connection from the series cable, which needs to be installed as well. So we'll just pop that on that. Then we'll have our connecting nut, which will go through all of these together, like so. And this square, sorry, the connecting bolt, I should say, and the square nut it goes on the back, just spin that on. And then what I'm going to do now is tighten the word up using a big Phillips. Just hold a nut on the back of that. It's nice and tight. And then I can, should have put that in there, but that's no problem. Slide that heat shield or heat shrink over the top of that um, and then we've got the big one which will go over the entire lot like so and then that will connect up to this side of the battery so that's the first one I'm not going to heat these up just yet just in case there's a problem and I need to get to it so that's the first connection done so that's going to go to this side I'll just pop that there for now now we're going to wire up this side um, so this is going to have it's going to have its battery cable it's going to have its charging cable but also it's going to have the power cable from the battery because that's going to pick up when it loops over 24 volts so I've already got a heat shield on that. I need a bigger one, I think. It doesn't really matter where I put that, I don't think, but we'll see. Um, open that up. 
So we've got our power cable. Pop that on that, I think. This is the positive going for the, from the charger into the battery. We have our battery cable, like so. We have our power supply from the from the from the unit, and then we can go with our nut. Sorry, our bolt. So pop that. Pop that through. Hang on. Pop that through that first. Then through the charging terminal, and then through the battery terminal. Thread the nut on at the back. Tighten that up. Just line these, move these around so they're all in line, like so. Heat shield, that's popped out of that, so I just need to put that back through its, I keep calling it heat shield, you know what I mean. And that's that. Now this is going to be too small to go over the nut, so that's why I've got this one. And that will go inside that, and we'll do the same for that. So that is, if you like, the, the, the connections for this this side of the battery. So now we'll go off and do the other side. Right, so I've gone ahead and done all the cabling. I haven't um, uh, heat shrunk anything on here just yet because I want to make sure that um, everything is working as it should. Um, so we have our power module connected. Uh, we have our inline breaker, which is a 60 amp breaker. I have my connection here which basically feeds uh, from the po positive terminal on this battery into the uh, connector then that feeds back into this breaker here and then into the power module I've then also got connected to that is my positive side of my charging cable and then on the same thing I've got on the same battery I have my negative cable coming out and simply just connecting up with the battery charger and also this lead here which is what the series connector is which then comes through this connector into this side of the battery which then should give us 24 volts and then on this side we've just got the, t the negative uh, terminal coming off into this feeding the power supply or doing, acting as the negative to the power supply to the tank and then the only other thing coming off of that is the negative cable for the battery charger I've got my multimeter set up. The first thing I want to do is just make sure that I'm now getting 24 plus volts from the setup. So this is the, um, the so these two are what's connected in this series and the outer ones on this in this particular example are what's supplying the tank. So I need to make sure there's 24 volts coming from these two cables. So I'll put this negative on this connector here and the positive on this connector here. I should be getting 25 volts which is perfect so I know that that's now running at 24 volts let me just put this protective sleeve over this for now and we'll do the same on that now what I want to do is I want to the breakers on at the moment so off I'm going to put the breaker on so that's now engaged no power supply going through it just yet um, now we'll turn the on switch on we should see this light up and then we have it lit up and that's telling me the batteries are charged at 100%, which is perfect. So I now know that I've got power supply at 24 volts coming out of uh, the batteries into the power module, and it's switched perfectly. So the next thing to do will be just to, um, to, to shrink the heat shields on these so they're nice and safe. Um, I'm then going to disconnect everything from these F2 or spade connectors, put the batteries in the tank, connect up the uh, power, uh, power supply to the drive motors, and we'll get these tracks hopefully running um, as intended. So um, apologies, it's been a long session. Um, I didn't record uh, all the rest of the connections because I thought it was, you saw me do the first one and it's basically just repeat the whole exercise. Hope you found that interesting. I'm super excited about, hopefully, fingers crossed, everything works when it's on the, t on the tank and getting the, um, the tracks ro uh, rotating as they intend or as I intend to do so that's perfect I'll um, switch everything off now so I'm just going to take the power supply off of that I will disengage the breaker um, and then I'll uh, we'll crack on right so 
as you can see I've now got the batteries installed temporarily inside the tank um, I've actually color coded the connections so it, I didn't get confused when I connect these up so I've just gone for yellow white blue and silver um, I've connected the uh, motor module or the power module and the mo motor module A up as per the Armatech instructions. I've connected the drive motors, um, so now everything's all connected. Um, and it's the moment of truth. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my radio set. This isn't, this isn't um, properly synced yet. I'll just turn the radio set on. Um, now I'm going to just turn the breaker on, and I've got this sort of power, this the the power, the on and off switch, which Armatec give you. So I'm going to turn that on, and I'm hoping I'm going to get some kind of just set everything to zero, some kind of signal between the radio and the handset. It's gone green. I don't know if you can see that on there. So now I know that the radio is com communicating to um, pesky fly uh, communicating with the tank so obviously the first thing I'm going to do now <laughs> with bated breath is to see if I can get these tracks moving so I'm going to do this away from, well that one's moving okay and that one's moving so what I'll do now is I'll I'll uh, reposition the camera so you can actually see these tracks moving so we'll just do that one more time. Obviously that it's moving and it's doing, I'm really pleased with that. Relieved. It's making some funny noises because the wheels aren't on the ground. But everything seems to be okay so far. Let's try the other side. So far, so good. Let's just turn this to its side a bit. Let's just take, sorry. Let's do this other way, sorry. You can see that these wheels are binding on here only because there's no weight on them. So when this is on the ground, so I think what I'll probably do is do a bit of a road test on this. Considering there's no weight on this, this seems to be running well. I'm just watching the sprocket and seeing that it's doing everything it should do. I think I'm happy with it. Let's go reverse. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but these these wheels are binding, so. So because there's no weight on them, obviously when they're on the ground there'll be there'll be a gap between them so you won't get that rubbing noise. Same with this set here. But everything seems to be so far doing as it's supposed to do. Just move that back round. Get them both running at the same time. So I think I'm pretty happy with that, but I will do a bit of a road test on it as well, um, just to make sure that what I suspect is happening, that these wheels are just, there's no weight on these, so it's not doing what it should do, but everything seems to be working fine. The sprocket seems to be engaging with the tracks fine. The tension, hard to tell, but they're on their tightest or the maximum tension. It may be that I end up having to take a link out, which is what I suspect I may have to do, but that's no hardship. So anyway, that's, uh, that's it for that. I'll be back to camera very shortly. So that's it for today's session. Um, I'm really pleased, actually, or relieved, should I say, uh, how it went. Um, today, really, I know a lot of, there wasn't a lot of tank building, but there was... All of, it was all about getting the power supply into the tank and showing you how I, I got around uh, the different terminals on the batteries and trying to get power into the tank. And it was brilliant to get the tank starting to do, of come, coming to life. 
Um, so I'm pleased with the, the way it's gone today. Happy that everything seems to be working as it does, especially with the electrics. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how the tracks are engaging with the sprocket and the drive case, but I really wanna get it off the bench uh, next time and do a bit of a, just a short road test, just to do some turns, sharp turns, forward and backwards, just to see how everything is reacting um, before I go ahead to the next stage of the build. So in order to do that, I will be taking um, my old friend here, the M26, off its table jack uh, or a scissor jack uh, onto the floor. Might as well do a bit of driving with that while we've got it out. Um, and then we do some road testing with the header. Then I get it back on the bench. And, and then if I'm happy with everything or make some adjustments, whatever is needed, uh, I'm happy with everything. Then I will then start doing the dubbing welding. And hopefully by then I'll have received the, uh, the, the next motion pack or the other motion pack, which allows me to um, check all the servos and make sure they're all doing what they're supposed to be doing again before I finally close off the glasses plate. Um, I, so I hope you've enjoyed today. I'm sorry there it, it wasn't much tank building, but I think it's an essential part of the build. And as I said earlier, uh, I did have some comments to say, look, could you just talk us through some of the electrics, which I hope you found very useful. Um, so that's me today. Uh, if you've liked this, please give me a thumbs up. If you just joined, um, uh, please subscribe because there is still a way to go on this. I mean, it, it looks like it's almost done, but it's still... There's, there's hours and hours and hours work left to, uh, to bring this header into the, the place where I want it to be. Um, so until next time, I'll sign off by saying I'm Tony. I absolutely love these tanks. Um, thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time.